Hey, what's good, everybody? Thank you for checking me out. This is Eko Simpson. I am coming your way with a beautiful conversation with uh, one of my sisters, one of my... What else can I use to describe you? Okay, she's my queen mother. And then queen mother of one of the awesome Asafu companies here in Cape Coast in the central region of Ghana. I've told you that in Ghana we have 16 regions and we happen to be in the central region. So anything that comes out from Cape Coast central region, I am happy to let you know. Uh, 2019, yes, the president said all African diasporas can come home. And then a Cebu chief said, hey, if you want to come, there are 5,000 acres of free land. Echo, echo, echo city. Yeah, so in 2019, the president of Ghana invited the African uh, diaspora community to come home and then join brothers and sisters here in the motherland. And then last year, I had a phone call, like I said, from a brother who said, hey, Echo, I want you to meet uh, one of the family members who would be a student as a queen mother here in Cape Coast Central Region. So yes, I mean, we scheduled a meeting and then here we are again after a year of her being installed as um, a queen mother and also a queen mother of development in Cape Coast. So I have here with me Queen AC. Give me five. Hey. Yes, I am always lucky to be, you know, interviewing, talking to queen mothers and uh, kings and queens and all that. So welcome to my YouTube channel. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous, Echo. Oh, okay, last uh -huh. year we met. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a discussion about something you were looking up to. Mm -hmm. And then exactly a year, mm -hmm. uh, we are here celebrating what happened last year. Yes. Now I want you to look into the camera, tell the people your name that you are being called in the US. Yes. And then your name as a queen mother and then how come you came up with this whole uh, 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 instrument as a queen mother here in Cape Coast? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for the question. And I'm sitting here tickled because I'm going to speak directly to your fans on this one. Okay. Anyone and everyone that does know the station, Echo has exposed all of us to the beauty of not only Ghana, but particularly Cape Coast. So for me, when you say, you know, my name, so my name in the U.S., um, it is Mandy Mullins Williams, but I now go by Queen Essie Akomapa Rasheen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that name. Essie mm -hmm. Akomapa Rasheen. Mm -hmm. The, you have a number to your, like. The first. The first. The first. Okay, so she's mm -hmm. the first. So mm -hmm. uh, you're lucky, you know, I'm lucky as well interviewing the first. Mm -hmm. Now, it's been a year. What has been the experience you being a queen mother from last year to this year? Mm -hmm. So I would say that when you say my experience, it's been beautiful, first of all. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I would say that honestly, I've not had anything that aligns all of my past experiences, my passions, um, who I am even within my personhood, let alone even spiritually, align all at the same time. So for me, I think that uh, sometimes, you know, you can go about life doing work, and there's other times you can go about life and you're honestly walking in purpose, and there's other times when destiny hits. So I believe that this time, in this moment, destiny has kind of collided with me. Okay. And that is how come we find ourselves here. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't, I've been following you mm -hmm. uh, the same way as your family here in Cape Coast. Mm -hmm. Someone would say you've been silenced for a year, but mm -hmm. I would say you've been doing the work underground. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this because today you are here in Cape Coast yes. with about more than 60 women. Absolutely. All the way from the U.S. to Cape Coast. Yes. And interestingly, uh, we are still projecting Cape Coast. Mm -hmm. That is why we are here today. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you went to meet the, the Paramount Chief of mm -hmm. Ogwa Traditional Council, Cape Coast. You had a discussion. I love it. What, what triggered this project of you bringing all these women to Cape Coast? Well, first of all, as um, you asked me the first question about what it's been like, my experience been like, I also, I guess, want to say that, you know, when you come, any of you all that have been able to make it to the continent, you either know that this is where you're meant to be, or 
you realize that it may have just been a vacation and you pass through. But most of your viewers, they know that either they're dying to get here yeah. or they've been here and they just know that this is exactly where they needed to be. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I first came, um, I knew that I was back home. Okay. And I primarily put that towards my Gullah roots, my Gullah Geechee roots back in America. And do you know much about the Gullah people? Nope. Ah. Tell me more about it. I shall tell you more about the Gullah people. So when we left here, particularly, you know, the west coast of Africa within the transatlantic slave trade, right, the Middle Passage, however you want to put it. But when we left here, uh, we went, went to the New World. We knew that we were landing in an area that uh, the whole diasporic, African diasporic community had to come together. Okay. So when we went, we landed within the Carolinas, we landed within Georgia primarily, and there were some other coastal areas. But the Gullah people particularly, we were a diasporic group where we had to come together. We had to unify. We had to put aside our tribal differences, our customs, um, certain nuances within our spirituality. And we chose to focus on what were those things that were still keeping us strong. Okay. So knowing that I was in raised with this kind of pan-African thinking automatically by being a Gullah girl mm -hmm. from the Carolinas, Beaumont, Beaufort, Orangeburg, I'm giving that shout out to those that are also the Gullah people that are watching um, your views yeah. in this moment. But I realize that that is the way to go as us as a people. Okay. We deserve to have this unity and the solidarity. And I know that often being here in Ghana, especially on the continent, you always hear about Africa Unite. Mm -hmm. And my passion when I came back, I realized that no, it's a little bit bigger than just Africa Unite. Right. Africa must unite right. because this is still the root it is still the foundation. But us as a global citizen and as a people, part of my reason of bringing the largest black college educated uh, mm -hmm. professional woman organization in the world here, uh, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, I give a shout out to my sores also who may be watching the line. Um, I knew that uh, this is the root, this is the base. And until you do come back to where your foundation begins, I really do believe that you really don't know yourself. Yeah. So it was very important to me to bring this group back here, to your point, of 65 women. But our organization um, at large is over three, 300,000 women worldwide. Wow. And I'm a national officer as well within the organization. All right. Salute mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. national officer. <laughs> yes. Um, the moment they heard that, okay, we are making a trip to Africa. Mm -hmm. I spoke to one of the sisters, and then she was like, this is my first time mm -hmm. here in the motherland. How was it like for you to convince? You, you, might, you might still convince them, yeah. even though it's an organization, if the leaders agree that we are going, everybody must go. But there was this still, the moment where you had to convince them that mm -hmm. we need to go to the mother. How was it like for all of you to agree that, okay, we are leaving, we yeah. are going? So one thing I know for certain is that passion is contagious. Okay. And anyone now that has met me behind what I know, um, that I love so mm -hmm. much within this continent and all with what this work does entail, I think that my fire in itself started to then ignite their fire, okay. their curiosity to say, hmm, you know what? I've been to Italy, I've been to Germany, I've been to China, I've been all over the world, but I've never been to Africa. Africa. And so, of course, it makes it easy for me then to sort of poke and say, why not? As a matter of fact, Let's go. Okay. So to have this kind of delegation, and, and it's really mind-boggling, I think even us as a people, mm -hmm. when you really do think about it, again, you all have the advantage, Echo, for living here and yeah. being here. Yeah. And oftentimes when you are talking about your ancestors, I almost think that sometimes you all may take it a little for granted mm -hmm. that you can go four, five, six, even seven generations yeah. back. Yeah. But for those that are part of the diasporic group that was forced to leave, Many of us recognize that we can typically only go back two to three generations to even name who our grandparents are. Mm -hmm. And so there's a curiosity that also then sparks that when one does realize, I have not been back home. Okay. I have not been back to the root of where my formation starts from, mm -hmm. let's go. Okay. So it made it an easy sell because also in 2021, uh, my sorority just established their West African chapter. Okay. So we also have our collegiate arm, and we are a collegiate-based organization, meaning that we were founded by collegiate members that went on to become trailblazers that has truly changed the world in every regard. So again, um, to get them to come back here was a pretty easy sell because they realized that, wait a second, we're starting our chapters there, 
majority of the delegation that has been here has never been. Mm -hmm. And this is the area where you do call the return back home, right? Okay. The doors of no return. Mm -hmm. But yet in 219, you all said, welcome back home. Yeah. So Ghana, out of all spots, it just makes sense. And let alone Cape Coast, this is where my passion our comes seats. in. <laughs> yes, our seats. This is where my passion comes in. Because I believe that, um, just like with the Jews, mm -hmm. they recognize that the area of what they walk in, of what they went through, I should say, within their history, um, is sacred. And it's, uh, they call it the Holocaust, right? Okay. Yeah. Likewise, when we left from here, you know, a lot of people do want to give the narrative to say that, well, you realize the Africans, they sold you, they did this, they did that. I am so blessed and fortunate that I'm a part of an Asafo, a warrior Asafo. So the woman king, mm -hmm. Yes. Guess what? <laughs> I'm really sitting in a real live woman king situation yeah. because these are the original Asafos mm -hmm. that were put in place yeah. to say that no longer were they going to allow what the colonializers did to us. Yeah. So it gives me great pride because I also then stand within Cape Coast to know that they fought very hard to make sure that that, was not, that, could not, that would mm -hmm. not take place. Yeah. And when you come here, right, and it is another sacred spot that you meet individuals like yourself and so many others that uh, continue to push to say, come back home and yeah. we love you, you're, you're us, you're one of us, mm -hmm. come back. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. But for me, you asked me also about my vision and uh, it's still being defined, but I'm very excited that I have, you know, over this past year, because as you also opened up, you said, you know, it seems like I just, you know, jumped on the scene or mm -hmm. came back. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that anything worth uh, doing and especially doing it well it does take time yeah. so over this past year after my installment I also was doing the due diligence to make sure that my foundation and the uh, infrastructure of what I wanted to build from was very solid so mm -hmm. I've established my 501c3 I encourage your viewers please 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 go visit africanroots.org um, the name of the organization is African Roots Worldwide, but I also looked at it as a divine moment. What about in this day and age that AfricanRoots.org is still even available as a URL? Wow. I know. African Roots. African Roots. The simplicity <laughs> of that. So African spelled A-F-R-I-C-A-N, Roots, R-O-O-T-S, dot org, O-R-G. And so currently right now we are raising money to be able to connect humanity okay. back to their African pathway. This is a pathway to recognize that, no, all of humanity comes from Mother Africa. Mm -hmm. But in doing so as well, we're inviting individuals to join us in various different programming. Yeah. So as I'm sitting here in this backdrop, you see the view that we're looking at. Yeah, the viewers can't beautiful. see it. But we have the ocean and the breeze and the beautiful trees and the greenery all around us. But I also recognize that due to a lot of the pillaging that is happening, right, we recognize that there's a lot of different companies that are taking away from our oil and mm -hmm. gold and things that are releasing a lot of carbon gases in the atmosphere. Yeah. So I do look forward to addressing a lot of the environmental and carbon footprints that are happening right now that is eroding our fishery. And again, as you know, Cape Coast, this is a fisherman community yeah. and it's worth protecting mm -hmm. because oftentimes when we come here and especially diasporic people that are getting away from various areas um, to come to more natural and holistic areas, we want the freshness. We want to know that our fish are not polluted with chemicals and all other kinds of things. So I'm very passionate to make sure that that type of programming is leading out and I know that it will be strengthening also my Anafo, Asafo, yeah. Company 2 community yeah. and also all of Cape Coast as well. But likewise, uh, various things too, such as education. Mm -hmm. You are a product yeah. of the premier education here in Cape Coast. Yeah. Um, I believe that our children here in Cape Coast should also have that type of opportunity. You do know that it is a large poverty rate that is here of the citizens that live here in Cape Coast. Mm -hmm. So I do look forward to how we are able to do scholarships to make sure that the children are able to maximize and to be a part of the premier schools that are here within Cape Coast. And again, I just encourage the viewers to go to the website because there was various other type of programming that we are setting up. Yeah. And like I said, we're raising money in this moment to be able to make sure that you know it directly impacts the people here, but also Africa Roots, just as the name says, is worldwide. We're equally setting up programming in various other areas. So South Africa is another area that we'll be going to. Okay. Kenya is another area that we are now building relationships to make sure that we are then preserving and building these um, programmings that we know that need to be protected, particularly around our cultural preservation. 
So I know that was a long answer, <laughs> but yeah. yet, that's why I'm saying also to go to AfricanRoots.org. Yes, so I am encouraging everybody to go to AfricanRoots.org uh, mm -hmm. and then read more about what is happening right now. Uh, before we end this, you have made the decision to come and then live like us. Mm -hmm. You go and come, you live like us. Mm -hmm. What message would you give to someone who has been skeptic about moving to the motherland, trying to whether live here, build here, do a business here, or connect with the people in the motherland? What is your message to those people? Oh, Echo, that one. I almost have to pause because you said that I've made the decision to come to live like you all, right? And I think that this is an exchange experience okay. because by coming here, I also recognize how much, as I mentioned also about my Gullah roots, okay. that I was already being raised with so much that has allowed this experience to be so easy mm -hmm. and so adaptable. Okay. I believe that that is one of the issues that most of us as dark melanated African people we really do need to take the time to have the full immersion experience, to get to know one another. Yeah. We have been so miseducated, misguided, and so many things on where we don't know um, what is really the truth. Oftentimes, it's when you experience it personally that no one can then tell you any differently. Mm -hmm. So you remind me of my cousins back home okay. and uh, the fact that, like I said, the value systems of the we, the us, the collective, right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned about the, what, what did you call susu. it? Aha, uh -huh, yeah, so the susu, right? Yeah. My grandfather and my grandmother, I remember when they moved from the south and migrated to um, upper state New York and also, you know, to Michigan with the railroads and many of your especially American diasporic uh, community, and I believe the community worldwide will relate to this, mm -hmm. but it was one where you always took care and t brought your siblings along, okay. right? So my grandfather was one of 11, my grandmother was one of nine, mm -hmm. and they literally brought brick by brick to make sure that each person had their homes. Okay. And likewise, we cherish our mm -hmm. parents. Mm -hmm. That is a core African principle. Yeah. So even with that, you know, as our parents get older, the more sweeter and more valuable that you realize that they are. So again, with me coming back within Ghana and watching the context of what really drives still the culture and the principles, it's me. It's you. So it's not like I'm really exactly embracing, besides me trying to work on my fancy. <laughs> besides okay. that part, besides that part. But the spirit, the love, um, you know when it's you know like-minded. We sometimes yeah. do say that all skin folk ain't kin folk. Mm -hmm. But when you do find them, it's a matter of fact that we speak the same language, yeah. even if we don't speak the same language. I am glad you've tuned in to watch this video. Uh, I mean, hear the conversation with myself and then a fan. Yes, she's my fan. <laughs> yeah, you are not my fan. I am your fan. So she's a fan, uh, Queen Essie mm -hmm. of uh, Anafu Asafu, number two company here in Cape Coast Central Region. So thank you very much for checking us out. And don't forget, go to africanroots.org, check it out, you know, just make a donation mm -hmm. so that we can have this vision, you know, come into reality. Uh, thank you very much for being on my channel. Mm -hmm. You're looking beautiful in your African everything, everything. Thank you. You're welcome.